We're back with Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Of course, the president has Dr. Fauci, and uh, they're talking about uh, building a bobblehead for Dr. Fauci. That's how you know popular he's gotten. And uh, now they're saying that uh, People Magazine, they've got this petition that People Magazine should make uh, Dr. Fauci the sexiest man in America. So what? We've got Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Yeah. So we're going to work on. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, we're going to work on a bobblehead uh, for Dr. Cavanaugh too. Hey, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, it's uh, obviously a, a critical situation that we're in right now, and Dr. Fauci, all kidding aside, is calling for a nationwide stay-at-home order, which my guess is you would agree with that, right? Absolutely. Why? As you know, I was speaking, we're getting into months, not weeks. Yeah. We need to be staying at home. Why is the president reluctant to issue that nationwide order? That, Jack, you should have asked his secretary when he was down here. I really think it needs to be issued. I'm sure that he's got a lot of politicos that are pulling on him one way and the other, but at this point, the virus doesn't care, and that order needs to be issued. Well, and it's something like 90, up in the 90 percentile range that are already are being uh, ordered to stay home on a state level, so it's not that many people that are, you know, that, that it would affect. But anyway, we've got a caller, uh, 253-5959. Kevin's here to answer questions. And uh, for your information, in case you haven't heard, he's one of our stable stars, and he's he's been with us for a long time. He is a retired physician himself and a founder and president of Health Watch USA. And uh, let's see, Joe is first. Joe, you're on with uh, Dr. Cavanaugh. Yes, thank you guys very much. Uh, doctor, I have a question. People who are asymptomatic, is how long would they stay contagious, or when would they know they were? Well, they don't know, and that's one of the problems. And I'm glad you brought the issue up of asymptomatic carriers. The CDC reported that as many as 50% of people are asymptomatic that test positive for the virus. And approximately that many have been reported to be picking up the virus from asymptomatic carriers. Now that includes people who will never develop the, the condition of COVID-19, and it also includes those who are spreading the virus before they develop symptoms which the CDC says could be up to 48 hours before. And that's one of the reasons why everybody in the public should be wearing a cloth mask or what's called a DIY mask, do it yourself. And it's my feeling that anybody going into the hospital, whether they have symptoms of COVID-19 or not, should be wearing a mask. The N95 masks should be reserved for healthcare workers, and of course, as we've talked before, N95 masks are not an insurance of not getting the infection. You have to have goggles, other gear, and N95, the 95 stands for filtering out 95% of the viral particles. Oh, I didn't know which that. Means, I didn't realize that. Yeah, five. 5% will get through. So this is minimum. When they're screaming about N95 masks, they're not screaming about top-of-the-line infection control. This is just minimal masks. And we did not have enough in our stockpiles. The hospitals didn't have enough in their supply rooms. They have run out of these and are currently rationing them. And when I say run out, they will still have them but we're hearing multiple reports of workers using the same mask through shifts, using them on multiple shifts, and in some facilities around the nation are even making cloth masks, which are minimal at best. Remember, as we talked about, cloth masks are best for preventing you from spreading the virus if you're an asymptomatic carrier than they are from you picking up the virus. Thank you for your help. Well, does that help? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Here's a, thank you. Here's a text that says, I have overactive immune system, Flemagold, is that how you pronounce that? Femagold, P-H-E-M-A-G-O-L-D. Couldn't that be helpful now with uh, finding a cure? Uh, well, a lot of people are working on cures. It's hard to 
state, you know, whether one immunosuppressant will work over another. But types of drugs which suppress the immune system are only given to patients with severe infections where their immune system is so revved up it's doing more harm than good. So don't take anything that's going to decrease your immunity with the idea that it will help you not to get the infection. It may do the opposite. What is Pitcovac? That I will have to pass on, Jack. I, I don't know. Okay. I heard this morning that it was a, a, a potential cure, and it was in the testing phase, and uh, that's the first time I've heard that word. Uh, or, and, and not a cure, I, should, I, I apologize, a vaccine uh, that they have come up with, uh, Pitcovac. Uh, 253-5959 is our phone line. It's also our auto tech service text line for Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Uh, what do you have in terms of information new for us? Well, the big thing is, is that churches are looking like they're one of the most dangerous places to be. And that's the cruelest thing with this epidemic. That's making people scared. They're calling to God in a higher power. But yet churches and singing are a combination for a disaster. And we've talked about this before with the Washington State choir where they were practicing social distancing and out of 60 people 45 became infected three hospitalized and two died and that was just the initial report mm. so singing unfortunately may aerosolize the virus and that means it makes it float in the air for hours and a passerby can pick it up that combined with close closed quarters is just a setup for a disaster and so we really do need to get the word out to churches to not hold services indoors. I suppose if you had people gather in their cars in a parking lot and you had a microphone up on top and were not singing, that maybe would work. But you really have to do social distancing, and it's far safer, far safer to use the Internet or other types of media or uh, technology to hold these services because any type of contact is can be dangerous and again that's why we encourage people to use cloth masks when they're out in public here's another text uh, we need to quarantine the high risk and get herd immunity here um, I don't see a question well, there. what do you think about that no I, and I think that's a statement well, there's two, two things that happen one is, before you do that, you, you need to have a rapid test. So you can test people to see who the asymptomatic carriers are. Because remember, even N95 masks are 95%. They're not 100. They do have N99 masks. That's number one. Number two, we need to have a better handle on the healthcare system and having availability of these masks and equipment. And you're going to need those for workers and food handlers. So our healthcare system being behind has really put us in a hole of getting back to work. And the concept of herd immunity is one which is very important. However, I've heard Mike Pence, I've heard other officials state that this is three times as infectious as the flu, which means it has an R naught of four. One person gets the virus, they will infect four people. And when that happens, you need a lot of people, possibly up to 75% that are immune before herd immunity would become effective. So the infectivity of this virus, the infectious nature of the virus, is one that makes herd immunity very hard to have. It will help, but we need to get these other tools also. And, and I also want to put to rest the idea that the young don't get this problem. They do. They get severely sick. They can wind up on a ventilator. If you have a high viral load in the beginning, such as what healthcare workers are exposed to, the illness can be much greater. So it is a problem also for the young, not just for those that are high risk, which unfortunately I fall into a very high risk category. And if you're on a ventilator, and you come off, there is also a risk of having lung problems afterwards that are chronic. So having just the young do this is really not a, a way of starting up the economy. 
And if our healthcare system gets overrun, similar to Italy, we could have a fatality rate approaching 10%. Mm. And no one's going to go shopping. If you've got people lined up at the hospital who can't see care and are making makeshift more, similar to how they're doing in New York City. All right, I mean, you can right. say we should start the economy, but it, it, it just won't happen until we get a hold of this. All right, we're going to take a break. Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh is with us this morning, and 253-5959 is both our phone line as well as our auto tech service text line. Uh, let's see, who's been on hold the longest? Well, that would be Glenn. Congratulations, Glenn. You uh, win the prize today, and uh, you are on with Dr. Cavanaugh. Thank you for calling. Uh, thank you so much for taking my call, sure. um, Jack and Doctor. Uh, a couple of quick questions. Uh, number one, what is the, we're talking about total lockdown or stay at home. What does that entail? Do we need to go out and start getting groceries and, and things that we uh, need, uh, need to survive? Uh, the next couple of weeks, uh, I just want to know exactly what what that means. And number two, uh, stuff that we need, masks, uh, sanita uh, sanitizers, and things like that that every citizen needs, it's not that easy to get. And if you get online to buy it, you're not sure if you're getting scammed or, or not. And if you have any answers uh, for those two questions, I appreciate that. You want us to hang up and listen? Sure. Okay, thanks. Well, I can tell you, I don't know if you're getting scammed, but you're often getting fleeced. The prices are just out the roof. Yeah. The best thing to do is to stay home, like the governor states. You have to look at what's going on in the other states, not saying, oh, we should go out to work. It's safe in Kentucky. No, it's safer in Kentucky because we're staying at home. Yeah. I'm not going out and getting groceries. We're having them delivered. We're doing non-perishables. I leave them out in the garage for three days and then bring them inside. There's also a good video by uh, Sanja Gupta on CNN which shows you how to wipe down groceries. I wear gloves. If you go to healthwatchusa.org, we have a coronavirus page. There's a link to it up on top, and we have a video on how to take gloves off without contaminating yourself. It's a little bit difficult to do. And I would have about two weeks of groceries at a minimum because if we get into a point where there's a lot of public fear, you may have everybody ordering deliveries and the delivery system may not be up to snuff in order to get everybody delivered food. And that's just the worst case scenario precaution. But I would certainly do that. And so staying at home is key. I don't know how to make a mask. Believe me, we weren't taught this in medical school. Your idea on how to make an effective mask is as good as mine. I've heard vacuum bags. I've heard cloth masks, cotton masks. Who knows? We never thought that in the world's greatest nation, we would be in a situation of not having a 75-cent mask, which, by the way, because of lack of central coordination with purchasing, is now costing up to $6. Brian, good morning. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, I hate to be like that, but that's more of a people who go out on missions would know how to probably make masks better than someone in healthcare. Right. So I would, I would ask your wife. She probably has a lot of good ideas, and I've learned a long time. To listen to your spouse. It life's a lot easier. And you know what? When it comes to sewing in Kentucky and types of materials, that's where the greatest knowledge is right now. All right, uh, Brian, good morning. Thanks for holding. Oh, yeah, that, that's no problem. I was waiting for him to finish his thought. Um, my question is on uh, on temporary or uh, uh, auxiliary uh, sites for possibly handling an overflow, um, and this has to go with the, uh, the identifying of a hotel in, in Lexington that could be used for uh, some type of uh, overflow services for the for CCP virus uh, sufferers. Uh, my question is: at a hotel, um, it is not the same as at a hospital. A hospital has an HVAC system, but they also have an air scrubbing system. Okay. Uh, hotel, Real quick question: we, we got 30, se 30 seconds left. Yeah. Let's let him answer. Okay. What do you know about that, by chance, uh, Kevin? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, usually these off-sites such as hotels are used for non-COVID-19 patients with the idea of I having see. COVID-19 patients in the hospital. Uh, but it is, a, it is a problem. This is one of the reasons why we can't have our health care system overrun to the point where we have to look for other places to put COVID-19 patients. Great show. Thank you. We'll talk to you on Monday morning, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh.